sorry. I didn't think you'd be back for ages. And that would have made it all right. No, I didn't know what I was Look, doing. I too much to ask for you to comport yourself with a modicum of dignity just for one day. Look, I just... I wanted to feel loved for a change. Oh, stop it, will you? Sick of hearing you whining. I've just buried my mother. Yes. And years before her time. And we all know why that was. What are you trying to say? You have lurched from catastrophe to catastrophe, always blaming anyone and anything but yourself. You are the author of your own misfortunes, Tracy. You and you alone. No, that's the... Shut up! And try listening for once in your life. We advised, we warned, we begged you to mend your ways, but you refused, point blank. Well, even if that's true, I've paid the price, haven't I? But no, that's just the point. You haven't. But Deirdre did. Every day of your adult life, right to the bitter end. Well, that's not true. Because she wasn't even here. I'm trying to tell you why. Because of what you did to Liz, your mother was too ashamed of you to come home. No! Yes, it's true! Your mother was worn out trying to defend you. She spent the last weeks of her life away from me, her home, her family, her friends, everyone who loves her, all because of you! Actually, I never knew she had a plot next to her mother. Mm. I think Blanche organised that. Mm, that figures. I never knew a woman more obsessed with her own funeral. Do you know, she even planned her own way while she was still alive. Blanche and funerals. I reckon that's the only reason she went out with Artie Shuttleworth. She was his groupie. Well, I don't care what they do at my funeral. As long as I go before my boys, they can give me to the bin men for all I care. Well, as long as it's not recycling day. <laughs> Now, I have made one or two arrangements. I, I mean, I know the music I want to be playing as I'm born into the church. Oh, what is it? Sending the clowns? If you must know, it's Barber's Adagio for Strings. They played it when Kennedy died and uh, at Princess Grace of Monaco's funeral. And now yours. Well, yes, I can see the pattern. That's not true. I have never heard you say that before. I didn't know. Bev told me, because of what you did, your mother couldn't face coming home. But why was she there in the first place, eh? I mean, it wasn't because of Bev's brother. Not really. It was because of Peter and what he did. Peter was innocent. <laughs> Have you forgotten about the affair? What Peter did with Tina is no different than what I did with Tony, and nobody died because of us. I wouldn't shine a light on that if I were you. But whatever I've done, at least I'm here. I don't see Peter. After everything he put Mum through, he couldn't even be bothered to come to her funeral. This isn't about Peter. Oh, no, you started this. Well, if you want to empty the laundry basket, bring it on. Let's get it all out. All I wanted today was the chance to grieve in peace. Are you going to rob me of that on top of everything else? Peter! I'm so sorry, Dad. Never mind that. Where have you been? Look, don't start, OK? I've had a nightmare. First off, there was a power failure just outside Leamington Spa for three hours. And then the train in front broke down at Stokes Home, another two hours just sitting there, so please. Do you know what? Most folk would have the sense to come up the night before. Not that it was out important or anything. You're here now. That's all that matters. Oh, the hours I've spent at that table next door, it's been like a confessional for me. I bet the local priest was grateful. <laughs> she always knew what to say in a crisis. Yeah, well, let's face it, she'd had a lot of experience. Oh, she lived a life, all right. Never a dull moment. Maybe she'd still be with us if there had been. I know she'd had some trouble with her daughter, but, well, her and Ken seem to be well-matched. <laughs> well, 
Well, uh, let's just say it wasn't always quite so obvious. What she's trying to say is they fought like cat and dog for years. Norris, please. Well, it's true. They were on and off more times than the light in Beth Tinker's fridge. Well, look, I'm not going to judge them on that. I mean, all relationships go through hard times. Especially when there's third parties sticking their oar in. Oh, it's a different world now, looking back. I don't know where the years have gone. Well, one thing's certain, there's no getting them back. Not sure I'd want some of them back. Oh, tell me about it. If I'd lived just for the years that I'd enjoy, I'd be seven next birthday. Oh. You'd still be a napping. Oh, please, <laughs> that's not an image I want in my head. <laughs> we'll have to nip and see Si later. Oh, well, that's just great. Only been back a minute and you're running off. Hey, he's my son. Yeah? Yeah. And you're his son. You're welcome to him after today. What are you talking about? I've buried my mother. My mother and he has a go at me. What I said was a long time coming. Well, not as long time coming as he was. Oh, no, but everything's forgiven for the prodigal son. Leave it, Tracy. This isn't the time. Yeah, well, somebody should have told him that. He's been on at me all day. Well, I don't need it. Not today. I came home from my wife's funeral to find you and your ex cavorting in my living room. Cavorting? No, we weren't cavorting. Hang on, just wait. Who, who are we talking about here? Robert Preston. When did he get back in touch? Today. Oh, well, you can get off your high horse because I remember how you spent your wedding night. Your mum was buried today. Has that just bounced off you? Has he not registered with you that this is bigger than you and your petty little jealousies? You have no idea how I feel. Oh, well, I'd never guess, that's for sure. You'd seem the same self-centred Tracy you always were. Oh, well, you're still the perfect son. Where'd you get off, Peter, lecturing me? You know what? I had hoped today of all days you might be able to break the habit of a lifetime and just think about somebody but yourself for once. But then again, you couldn't do it when Deirdre was on Whoa, whoa, so whoa. Why, I've so had this from him and I can now. take it from him, just. Yeah. But not from you. Because you caused Deirdre as many sleepless nights as Listen I did. Listen to yourself, what are you talking about? It's not a competition. No, you're right! It's not a competition! Unbelievable. Because she was my mother, my flesh and blood, and you two don't have an idea how I feel. Neither of you. Ken never struck me as the womanising type. Oh, 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 you're joking, aren't you? I'd go through the list for you, but it's kicking out time in a few hours. <laughs> Worth everything from exotic dancers to librarians to bargees, apparently. Oh, you'd be surprised by some of his old flames. Well, it works both ways, mind. I mean, Deirdre might be an angel now, but it wasn't always the way down here. <laughs> Be the first to admit it. Mm, but it was always Ken she loved. I don't know. It was touch and go with Mike Baldwin for a long time. I'm not sure he ever really got over her. But she made the right choice in the end. I remember that poor Moroccan lad she married. Then there were John Lindsay. John Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a long story. Suffice it to say, he were a bad one. She were like me, she were like a magnet for him. Yeah, of course, there was your Lewis. But it wasn't my Lewis. I mean, anyway, there wasn't anything to it. It just one kiss, that's all. Still hurts, though, doesn't it, when someone goes behind your back? Are we going to go on like this all night, Bev? I mean, if there's something you want to say to me... No, nothing. That you don't know already. Oh. This is not doing anybody any good, is it? What you reckon? Because I'm only just getting warmed up. Warming up? I, what do you think this is, Tracy? Don't bother trying to reason with her. She'll just do whatever suits her, regardless of the consequences for those fool enough to care about her. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I do do exactly what I want, it's because I've learnt from the best, the very best. Don't. Don't do this, not now, not today. Why not? Because he hasn't spared my feelings. No, Dad, you wanted to give somebody a good kick in and I was the closest thing to hand. If you think this gave me any satisfaction... Oh, no, Dad, you went outside the house for that, didn't you? Talk about being a flaming hypocrite. I mean, what was her name again? Ah, oh, Wendy Crozier. And what about that love boat down the canal? Martha, wants it? Just leave it, Tracy. Everybody in this family's made mistakes. 
Everybody. Are you talking about my mum? Oh, well, who's being disrespectful now? I'm just saying. Well, that's all don't I'm just say! Saying. Because if she did play away from home, it was better than playing in here, wasn't it? I mean, why she ever came back to this pokey little house, I have no idea. Him sat in that chair with his cosy cardigan and your cryptic crosswords. Yeah. Mike Baldwin must have seemed so much more exciting. I'm going for a lie down. Oh, yeah. That's it, Dad. Run off. Truth hurts, doesn't it? Leave him alone. Come back in here. Have you not done enough damage for one day? Oh, well, you would defend him, wouldn't you? Because you're a chip off the old block. <sighs> There's no comparing some of the things that I've done with him. Well, I suppose you did have a conscience to drown. But he, he betrayed Mum off half a bitter. What are you trying to achieve by this? I'm just trying to get him to understand what it feels like to be me. Ah, just another sob story. Yeah, well, it yeah. needs telling, because I am sick of it. Everything that goes wrong, I always get the blame. Well, if I did play a part in Mum's death, and I do have blood on my hands, then so do you, and so does he! <laughs> these up since I ran this place. Yeah. They were renovated after the fire. Yes, Deirdre told me. Must have been difficult for Dev. Yeah, it was. It's never easy losing someone you love. No. Bev, just a minute, please. I think it's time you and me laid things to rest. Fred wouldn't want all this. Don't, please. Just let things be. No, I can't. And neither can you by the look of it. Look, I know how hurt you were, but it was you he loved, Bev. And what was he doing at your house on our wedding day? I told you. He was just being Fred. He was just being a gentleman. He was letting me down gentler. Letting you down? While you were sat on the sofa having a cosy chat, I was stood in a drafty church wondering if I'd been jilted. Well, you hadn't. Fred was devoted to you. He chose you over and above me. Well, you're not still peddling that line, it's are you? It's true. It was true then, and it is now. Even if it was, if it hadn't been round yours, then... Uh, please, listen. <sighs> Fred didn't die because he was in my hallway. OK, I shouldn't have interfered and I shall regret it for the rest of my days. <sighs> I was just confused. Fred wasn't. <sighs> he wanted to be your husband and not mine, and honestly, what happened was a pure tragedy. We had such plans. He died a happy man, Bev. That was all down to you, love. No one else. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to try and tell you that before going. Wait. Do you know, Deirdre hated the way things were left between you and me. And she said it once, she said it a hundred times. Grudges are bad for you. They eat away at your soul. Can't argue with that. She always wanted us to patch things up. I'd like nothing better. All right. All right. If there's one thing this week's proven, it's life's too short. And I'll not deny Deirdre a wish, not today. You're right. I did give Deirdre grief. And the simple truth was, her life was better off without me in it. Hers and everybody else's round here. But at least, you know, I had the decency to leave. She didn't want me to leave. Oh, and that's the reason you hung around? No, I don't think so. You never paid any attention to what Deirdre wanted, Tracy, or you would have changed years ago. Don't give me that. Yeah, well, it's not that easy, is it? I mean, I would have thought you. Beyond anybody else would know that. I do. But God knows I'm trying, whereas you, it seems to me you're just gonna... You're just gonna carry on repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. Well... At least I haven't got anybody to hurt now, have I? Apart from myself. 
If only that were true. What about Amy? You know, when I think about Amy, I'm scared for her. And I know that Deirdre was scared for her too. How dare you? How dare you judge me on how I raise my child after all you've done to Simon? But Amy's a bright girl. She can see how you live your life and that's going to dictate a future, who she turns out to be. Do you understand? Oh, you got your crystal ball out, have you? I don't need one. One of two things is going to happen, OK? She's going to take you as a blueprint and be just as hated by the people around here as you are and just as alone. No, because she'll always have me. Yeah, until she drives you into an early grave, the same as you did with Deirdre. But personally, I hope I'm banking on things going the other way. All right. Oh, well, then, come on, Mystic Meg. This has got to hear. I hope. No, in fact, I would pray if I thought it would make any odds. I hope that she sees how much people despise you on this street. I hope she hears about every rotten trick you've pulled and every bridge that you've burnt and she comes to hate you for it. You really hope that? I'd sooner she hated you than was hated by the whole world. Because unless you do something about it, those are her only choices. Her only choices. There might still be time. Hello. Hello. I didn't expect to see you again today. Well, I thought I'd give you a hand with tearing up. Oh, word she never thought she'd hear from a fella of hers. <laughs> Where do I start? I'll tell you what, I'll get you a pint first. There's no point getting stuck in properly until it's closing time. I'm going to leave you two to chat. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming to the service. Oh, don't be daft. I know she meant a lot to you. I, uh, well, I couldn't help noticing Leanne giving you some funny looks. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Um, I brought that on myself, I'm afraid. How come? Well, she was trying to discipline her kid at the funeral, and I was, I was stupid enough to chuck my tablets worth in. Why? Well, it was kicking off. I know how much did they meant to you. I didn't want him spoiling the service. I, I, I know I should have kept my beak out of it. Oh, you should have. Very dangerous territory, that. I can remember a woman coming up to me in the shop once, and she said, Steve were too old to be sucking a dummy. I nearly shoved it up. Well, he wouldn't have wanted to suck it again, that's for sure. <laughs> you all right, love? Hiya. Can I look at the gin and tonics, please? You all right, Dad? <sighs> Better for the rest. <laughs> Thank you. Dad, I'm sorry. I really am. We both said things that were better left unsaid. No. No, I deserved it. Every word. I don't know, it, it's just the things I do, I, I run away with myself, I can't help it. I think the less people thought of me, then the less I cared what they thought. But I'm gonna change. Really? No, I mean it. I mean, Mum dying, it's, um... Yeah, it's been a wake-up call. I'm going to sort myself out. I'm going to be a better person for Amy's sake. Well, you can start by helping me make a brew, then. Come on. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night to you all, and yeah. thank you Are for your company. You <laughs> there. Yeah. See you again sometime, right? Yeah, I hope so. Ah, oh, come on, you two reprobates. I'll uh, walk you home. Are you coming, are you? No, I might hang around a bit, see if they need help packing right. up. Right. It's been really nice catching up. Oh, it has. Yeah. When are you off? First thing tomorrow. Oh, oh yeah. well, it's been lovely to see you again. <laughs> And I appear to be an arm short. No, you, you've I... got the, your arm in the wrong sleeve, you silly <laughs> ape. Come here. Oh, oh, are you going? Right. Oh, yes. it's way too late for my bedtime these days, love. But mm -hmm. it's been lovely. Oh, it really has. Yes. I mean, as I've been dreading today, but but it's been brought back so many fond memories. Oh. Yes, well, if you could remember where your arm holes are, as well as you can remember 1976, then oh. you... Shush. Right. right, before you go, 
Schedule. Come and help yourself to oh. one of these. Oh, there we are. It's a Shiraz. Bold, strong, big hearted, and takes no prisoners. Um. <laughs> it would be Idris' favourite. Oh. <laughs> Look, I, Henry, I think perhaps you've had it. Right. I know we've all got our memories of Deirdre, and they'll never fill the hole that she's left, but we should cherish those memories. Because to make her smile, and that's what she'd have wanted. I had the most loyal, best mate a woman could ever have. She told the dirtiest jokes ever. <laughs> <laughs> She'd laugh with you, cry with you, fight with you if needs be, whatever it took to help you. I know my life wouldn't have been the same without her. She was a one-off. And I will never, ever forget her. To our friend, Deirdre. Deirdre. I keep thinking she's going to walk in that door, you know, wafting a cigarette smoke about, singing the wrong lyrics to some song. Do you know what I used to love? I used to love it when something used to make her laugh, you know, especially if she'd had a drink and she'd get so hysterical that she'd, she'd have tears running down her cheeks. <laughs> totally <laughs> uninhibited. <laughs> Joyous, wasn't it? And entirely without malice or side. Mm. That was her. Hey. She was dead serious about these, though, wasn't she? Even if nobody else was. I never saw her use that ashtray. I thought it was a bowl. It's an egg cup, actually. <laughs> That's an egg cup? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to see the chicken that laid an egg that big. <laughs> oh, she knew there were pants, really. But she didn't give up. No matter what anybody said about her. Yeah, I reckon there's a lesson there somewhere. Right, that's the rubbish out. Is there anything else I can do? Not down here, there isn't. <laughs> Not after today, I don't think so, Eileen. I shall be asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. Well, go to bed then. I can help these two. What? And get under their feet? You've gone up, I'll see you in bed. All right, if you insist. Fiver, you do not go straight to sleep. You're going to have to have a little cuddle after today. <laughs> OK, then. What about you? I saw the way you were around Michael. What's this? Nothing. Don't give me nothing. It wasn't the wine that was flushing your cheeks. Come on, spill. I've got nothing to spill. Yeah, you fancy him, don't you? <laughs> Might just grown on me a little bit. And a book celebrating Deirdre Barlow, Deirdre, A Life on Coronation Street, is available to pre-order now from all good retailers. And Coronation Street continues tomorrow at 8.30. Next here on ITV, strap in for 100-year-old drivers, ride again.